So hi, Ed. Thanks for joining me today. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. Thank you for having me on. So uh, I wanted to get you on my show because uh, I'm a big fan of you personally and professionally, so it means a lot that you're here today. Let's start with your book. You have a book out and it's called Wired for Success. Do you want to start with telling everyone a little bit about your book and what made you want to write this book? Yeah, definitely. Um, basically, I wanted to write the book because I had some things to say and I didn't really have a platform to say it on and social media just wasn't cutting it. So I had to uh, kind of organize my thoughts and put them together in uh, something that I decided would be a book. Um, the book Wired for Success uh, brings together uh, philosophy and entrepreneurship to debunk some of the myths that are underlying the common sense of our culture these days when it comes to money and success and uh, just making it in, in business as an entrepreneur. And yeah, basically I, I bring together some practical philosophies um, using, you know, Eastern philosophies and Stoicism and, uh, you know, pick some things up from Western psychology as well. And uh, pretty much to just talk about the importance of self-awareness and how our businesses are really a reflection of us as, you know, as people and how we can create a better business by becoming, uh, you know, more did evolved you, as a human being. Did you mention that phrase in the book that the, our businesses are a reflection of us? Did you mention that in the book yes. too? Yeah. And yeah. Um, because as you know, I've just started uh, rereading the new version and I, I read that and just went, oh, this is just too true. It's too much of a reality check. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I loved that you, that you said that. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background story and, and how that led you to writing the book. Yeah, definitely. I, I started my first business in e-commerce and then expanded into wholesale and distribution uh, when I was uh, 21, maybe about I think, 10, 11 years ago now. And, you know, business was going great. A few years into it, I was making more money than I ever had before, made enough to actually leave my job. And, uh, you know, everything looked really good. You know, I was buying all the things I wanted, doing all the things I wanted to do, spending my time how I wanted. Uh, but somewhere deep down, things just weren't, you know, registering as how I thought they should. Uh, things, things looked great on paper, you know, things from the outside, everyone, you know, was looking at me and they, it, 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 I had this, you know, aura of, you know, success, but really inside I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling like a success and it took a, a, a pretty major accident. Um, I had a pretty bad fall at an international jiu-jitsu tournament and I tore my shoulder and it required some intensive surgery. And, um, you know, during the recovery process of that surgery, that's when things really started to click. You know, I was sitting up in bed uh, just a couple days after the surgery because I couldn't lay down. Things were just it was just so painful to, to fully go horizontal. So I was kind of just like sitting up, my arm was in a sling and, uh, you know, I had my window cracked open with nice breeze coming in and I had heard all the cars passing by. I still remember this, like it was last week. And, you know, all, all these realizations just kept hitting me. And, uh, I realized how, even though I was taking ownership in, um, you know, the, the, business aspects of my life. There were a lot of other aspects of my life that I was neglecting. And um, that was one of the biggest realizations that hit me that day was uh, just taking complete ownership of your entire life. Uh, not just your business, but really, you know, your interpersonal relationships, your, uh, you know, your real 
desires deep down, like what you actually want out of life. And I, I don't think I had actually ever stopped to ask myself that question before. And, you know, that those are those are important things that we should all really consider, especially, um, you know, on this path of entrepreneurship, when there's so many options available to us, we got to really uh, kind of buckle down and decide what we really want for ourselves. So what, a, what yeah, I like was, about that. that. Was Thank you. What I like about that part of your story, and didn't mean to cut you off, um, but I just wanted to praise you because um, I guess when you said that you weren't feeling like a success inside, other people may just look for a bigger or, or better goal, whereas you sort of stopped and just went, current process is not working. And it sounds like you started asking yourself just smarter questions at that point um so i like that i just wanted to acknowledge that thank you thank you yeah i think i think that's a common thing and uh, i i guess maybe i was lucky to realize that within myself that more wasn't going to cut it um it i think that's a very common thing you know once we get that rush of accomplishing something or finishing something that we look for the next thing. And, um, you know, while that's great, it, it keeps us, you know, moving forward and progressing, developing and, you know, reaching other goals that we have in mind for us. Um, I think some reflection is, uh, is important as well. I feel like, um, cause I recently went through that and some of that can be about having too much attachment to the outcome. Yeah. Do, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I just went through it very <laughs> recently. And um, again, that is really about just loving the process. And speaking of that, you know, you and I both follow Gary V, and he always talks about loving the journey, loving the process. And I bring him up because I just thought I would the, you know, for some background story, just explain how we connected. Um, I think it was on a, a writing group and I had said something that very typically Gary V would say, and you obviously picked up on that and you commented. And just from that, you know, that little interaction and we're here now. And that was, was that one or two years ago? It would be two years ago at least. Yeah, at least, at least two years ago, at least. Yeah. Just from that little comment. So thank you, Gary, for connecting us. <laughs> um, yeah, I really love that. And also, so then afterwards, when I asked you a little bit more about, you know, what you were doing and what you were working on, and you told me about your book, and, um, and I had the privilege to read a very early draft of your book. So to see you at that point and to see you now is just in incredible to me. And I also wanted to ask you, so when you were getting, so I was one of, I guess, one of your beta readers and, um, you know, what, what kind of, what kind of feedback did you get from your beta readers this is now the writer and me just being curious about this process and how much value is there in that process in in beta readers oh i think uh tremendous value um as writers i think we can even as business people i think we can sometimes get caught up in our own ideas in our own head and working on one particular project for such an extended period of time we it's there's no doubt going to be some sort of uh, narrow view once you're once you're in there so long right and and i think having that outside perspective helps a lot uh, you as well as some other people provided some uh, feedback that that really shaped the book to what it is today and i'm utterly grateful for that uh, i don't think it would have turned out the way it did if i hadn't reached out uh, to you and people like you to, to help out with that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, such a great resource. And especially the day we're living in with 
you know, the digital age where we can connect with people from all around the world and, you know, uh, get help like that. Uh, I, I think it's something that, you know, everybody should do, whether it's in writing and business and uh, whatever field it's in, whatever field you're in, it's uh, another person's perspective can always help. Yeah. And, um, you know, I hope it's okay to mention this, but when I did read that first draft, I was like, but what about Ed? What about, what about you? Like, you know, where do you, cause you were dropping in all of these amazing philosophies and backing those up, but I was trying to establish a connection to you. And when I started rereading the new version, um, and I got to that paragraph, I've got it here in my notes, uh, where you wrote, who am I to write such a book? Um, and that whole paragraph, which I'm going to link to somewhere because I love it. Um, it just made me smile. And I was just like, yeah, he put, he put that in. And I was just so happy because it really, because that's one of my first questions as a reader of self-help and personal development. I'm like, well, what are their, what are their, you know, like accreditation is a big word, but what gives them the authority, I guess, to, to write this book? And it does sound a bit judgy, but it's, it's, always, it's just a, a first question that I have when I pick up a book in that genre. Yeah. So it yeah, made me smile. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it's something, um, it's, a, it's a reasonable thing to ask, right? You know, if this person is telling me all these things, you know, what, what qualifies them to say these things? So it's, it's a reasonable thing to bring up. And um, I think that the thing that makes, how do I phrase this? I think the thing that makes it okay is that each person has their own perspective and their own you know, journey that they've gone through. And if I'm circling back to the whole reflection thing again, if a person does uh, kind of sit back and reflect on those past, uh, whether it's successes or failures or whatever it may be, those experiences, um, there's something to pass on to another person that is on a similar journey. And uh, I think that's where, that's where the little golden nuggets can be found. Totally. We need to talk about your decision not to narrate on the audio book. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, what was that? Was that a time or expense thing? What happened there? It's like, listen to your voice. It's like one of my favorite mobster voices ever. Why didn't you narrate your book? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I think, uh, I think I just found somebody that was better than me and, you know, got them involved. That's, that's, I guess it's the business side of me. I, 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 I like to spot talent and when I see that talent, you know, I like to bring him on board to the team and, you know, see what we could do together. He does have a very, I've forgotten his name. Um, he, he's Mark, a very nice, yeah, yeah. very nice and very professional, but I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'd rather listen to it in your voice, <laughs> but you know, whatever gets the text out there, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I have to say, I've got to add one of my favorite mobster voices, just in case in the future I happen to interview Robert De Niro, and then you know it could get a little bit, yeah. Um, I, I don't think I have anything on Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> not, not his mobster voice, at least. <laughs> um, okay, so let, can we talk about procrastination? Um, because you know, I, at the time that we first connected, I had an, a, an unpublished fiction manuscript, right? And now I still have an unpublished fiction manuscript. And, um, you know, they're, they're just choices that, you know, I, I, I really want to get on the traditional publishing path. And you obviously explored all of that. So I want to talk about, um, okay, let's maybe talk about traditional versus self-publishing. Like just what were some of the deciding factors for you? So 
I guess maybe we should back up and uh, I, I can explain what route I took. So I was looking into the traditional publishing route, just like you were in the beginning. And um, I realized that a lot of the major companies, uh, they, you know, even if they accept you or when they accept you, um, they have a whole list of demands and being a new author, you kind of have no leverage. You have to give in to those demands and, you know, take what you can get. And one of the biggest things was uh, the rights to the material, the rights to the book, the audio book and everything else that comes out from it. And, you know, being in business, I, I kind of um, didn't see the, the value of giving away those rights for what I was getting back in return. From what I understood, I could be terribly mistaken, but from what I understood, uh, these companies don't really promote your book the same way they would promote, you know, an author that's been around for a while or that's been working with them for a while. Uh, so I decided to take another route. Uh, the other option that I came across was the self-publishing. And I realized uh, from the little bit of research that I did, uh, there is a certain stigma to the, the self-publishing category or publishing route. And that was one of a lack of credibility. Uh, so what I did is I kind of thought about it and I looked into what it takes to start a publishing company. And it really wasn't as difficult as uh, one might think. So that's the route I took. I decided to just start my own publishing company, traditional publishing company. So now the book is traditionally published. Um, and I still own all the rights. You know, I, I found it, a little loophole, I guess you could say. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that you went that way, like with the taking ownership. Um, uh, you know, it, it just, I remember that time when um, I, I was just feeling a bit, a bit low and you were like, just do some fucking push-ups, just do freaking 50 push-ups in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, what, I'm going to need more than that. But you know what? I'll just go with it. And um, yeah, I've always liked that, you know, just own it attitude that you have, which brings me to the question, do you see yourself as a, a life or business coach? You know, I, I really don't like the term coach just the way that it's been thrown around in this last several years. Um, there are people that call me their coach. I've been called coach, mentor. I, I do like the term mentor a little bit better um, just because, you know, I, I, I don't see myself as, as a, I, I mean, really I see myself just as another human being with some, you know, experience that I could pass on to another person and some knowledge that I've gathered due to this experience. Um, but yeah, I guess to answer your question, I, I just see myself as a, as another human being that, um, you know, may or may not have something for someone else. Yeah. I mean, having that book and the title of it, Wired for Success, does put you in, kind of automatically puts you in the business coach category, which is okay. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree that it does get thrown around a lot but you know then I guess when you're when you're putting out your content that kind of just speaks for itself and the audience decides you know could right is this guy a coach material you know that kind of thing but yeah I wanted to I did want to ask you that um glad I did I can we talk about um, martial arts? Because you had said that it can give you a sense of who you really are. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, can you elaborate on that? Sure. Sure. So I practice a particular discipline of martial arts called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And in jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu is one of the only, uh, one of the few um, martial arts where you can actually spar with your partner and, you know, be putting in 100% effort 
and not um, always hurt your, your partner or get hurt in the process. And being in that type of experience, you really are exposed to your limitations, uh, your wherewithal, what you know, what you don't know, what you're capable of. And I think being in a position like that, um, you can't run from yourself. You know, if you're sparring with your partner and you guys are wrestling and, you know, you're out of breath, you want to give up, but, you know, you, you actually haven't lost yet. You know, well, there's that voice in the back of your head that says, oh, you know, I should I should just give up. You know, I'm tired or whatever. Um, but really, you know that, you know, deep down there's there's more, you know, you can push yourself more. Um, and I think that martial arts really gives you that opportunity um, you know, there's a phrase that we use when we say um, the mats will never lie to you. Uh, you really get to see, and that's where that, you know, that uh, what you said uh, comes comes back to what you said. Uh, you know, the mats will never lie to you. You know, once you step foot on those mats, uh, you really get an idea of where you are and both how far you've come and how far you have to go when you look around you as well at the, at, at the partners you're training with and um, you know, how much there is to learn. So uh, is that another way of saying that the, the training and the culture with martial arts just kind of seeps into daily life practices, like there's a, a nice overlap there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, I can relate it to business as well. You know, I, I like to, in my book, I actually talk about how um, – our businesses are our vehicles in the dojo, which is the marketplace. And I kind of make those references. Um, and it's, it's really a, a surefire way to see, you know, what skills you've developed and how well you play with other people. And, you know, when you're out there, you know, you're, you're pitching your offers or you're, uh, you know, trying to gather leads, it, you really get that, Again, that that notion of being on the mats, of being in the dojo, and and really trying to implement your techniques, your skills, your methods, and to see what what results you can get. Hmm. I think the closest that uh, I have felt to that recently is waking up in the morning, realizing there's no coffee left, and going right. Who am I going to kill my path to get this coffee? Yeah, sorry I'm just trying to relate um, uh, you know, any we... physical activity even those even those push-ups um, you know I'm sure there was a point in the back of your head you're like I, I don't know if I could do another one but you mm. you know maybe one of those days or a few of those days or more than a few of those days you you did find the strength within yourself to push out you know a few more yeah yeah it does create that energy shift that you didn't even realize that you needed right. to, yeah. to have. Um, can we talk about the highs and lows of this book journey for you after, I was going to say after it was released, but really at any point, let's talk about that. Um, well, I mean, throughout the whole path, I, I should say that I, I never really considered myself a writer before writing this book. Um, you know, I was in business for, at the time, I think eight years, seven years, and that's what I have known my whole life. You know, I've known marketing, I've known sales, you know, product development, research and development, and I never really uh, considered myself a writer, but there I am, you know, writing a book, and uh, I got to say throughout the journey, it was, uh, it, it was really difficult. Um, there was a lot of challenges. There was a uh, there was tons of procrastination, you know, as, as, as you brought up that so commonly experienced on this path, you know, dealing with things like uh, writer's block and, you know, all that other stuff. And um, I, I think what really made it click was the identity. Uh, as you see, I never, I just said, like, I never considered myself a writer up until writing that book. Well, what, what made the biggest shift to, to go from the down to the up uh, on this up and down journey here <laughs> was seeing myself as actually a, a writer, seeing myself as a professional writer, um, 
even though I hadn't published anything yet, but hey, I'm I am sitting down, I am spending my days, you know, organizing my thoughts, uh, creating drafts, editing, doing all that stuff, and hey, that's what writers do. So once I clicked in my head that hey, I actually am a writer, uh, the procrastination and all all of the uh, the insecurities that come with sharing your work and putting your thoughts on paper, all of that stuff slowly started to melt away. And yeah, I think identity is a, is a powerful thing to uh, consider on any path of uh, any shift in lifestyle. You know, if you're trying to change something in your life, I think it's very important to change the way you see yourself along with what your actions are. I love that you said identity because um, that's a big theme in the premise of this show. Um, in in my first episode, I, you know, talk about my struggles with my identity. I've just got a, a, a sub question off that. You know how they say that, you know, you shouldn't really define yourself by what you do um yeah is that a depends kind of question like what do you think about that well can i just quickly say yeah. I, I love yeah. I, yeah. I i i love uh, you know cuz i'm a romantic and i would love to just shout it out from the rooftops. I'm a writer, I'm a writer, I'm a writer. But, um, you know, again, that attachment to the outcome, um, I'm just curious if that can possibly be detrimental if you tie too much of that to your overall identity. Right. I, I think it's important to remember that whether we're writing a book, whether we're uh, creating a business, you know, coaching people, mentoring people, uh, whatever it is we're doing, those are just roles we play in society, right? I mean, these are masks that we're putting on and entertaining ourselves and others with. It's not really who we are. And I think if we attach too much significance to these roles, you know, what, what happens when that book flops? You know, what, what happens mm. to you as a person if you have tied your entire identity to being a writer and, you know, it turns out that you need more practice writing, you know? So I, I think it's very careful. We need to be very careful what we attach our identity to. And, you know, when we are even attaching ourselves to these certain ideas of who we are, quote unquote, uh, I think it, it's important that we remember that uh, the fact that, you know, this is just a mask I'm putting on, you know, it is just a role I'm playing in, you know, society, you know, whether it's to deliver value or to entertain myself or to entertain others, whatever it is, um, it's just a mask I'm putting on. I really like that you said that because if you value connection, right, you know, and you putting yourself out there with a role that you're playing, then that is a, a very quick way to establish connection with another person because there's, you know, particular aspects that they're going to be drawn to in that role that you're playing. But if you're just showing up as a, an unidentified human being, it's going to make connection really difficult. So that's, yeah. A really good point. Right, right. And it, it's it's also important that we're staying authentic to those roles we're playing too, right? Like I can't go around and say I'm a doctor, right? I mean, I could call myself a doctor all I want, but unless I'm practicing medicine, um, you know, I'm just, I'm lying to myself. So it, it it's important that we stay authentic to those roles and how we actually... Uh, present ourselves in those roles. You could go around saying that you're part of the mafia, though. I'm just saying because you're <laughs> halfway there. <laughs> I got the voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're, 
you're just there. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, now, you're in LA. Yes? Yes. I got that right. Yep. <laughs> um, you, just, you just had a heat wave or something. And I was going to temporarily call the episode Sweat It Out Loud because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. It was uh, actually about 100, 110 degrees for like two weeks straight, uh, which is pretty hot for me and where I'm from. So you survived that. How? I did. I did. Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. How attached are you? I mean, I've, been, I've spent like very minimal time in LA just stayed in a hotel room most of the time just passing through so I didn't really experience LA culture how attached are you to the lifestyle over there I don't know if I'd say I'm attached I think I value the relationships I have here um, I do think Los Angeles is a beautiful place you know you got the beach just 30 minutes away you know you got mountain forests 30 minutes in the other direction so I, I think it's a beautiful place to live and i like i said i, I have a lot of you know uh, a, a nice home base that i've developed here but I, I wouldn't say i'm attached you know i've spent quite a quite some time traveling and you know i've, I've experienced life in other places more or less i mean uh, not to the extent obviously of los angeles but could you see yourself living somewhere else? Uh, I I can, yeah. I, I can I could I could see that happening. Um, there would have to be some sort of reason for me to to want to move away from you know my family and the relationships I have here. Uh, but I, I, it's, I'm not against it if you know things align to come up that way. I really like that as a general statement in life when you're talking to people and you can just simply go, I'm, I'm not against it. Like it just puts you on this, you know, you don't close yourself in to anything. I think I might use that more in, in future. I'm not against it. So <laughs> where I was going with that question was I was curious if you were living somewhere else, do you think that you'd, you still would have written this book or do you think this book was – destiny for you? That's a really good question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not entirely certain because it is the experiences I had here living in Los Angeles, uh, you know, having the business that I did, being in the family that I did, having the circle of friendships that I have that kind of molded and chiseled my perspective to the, be the way it is to sit down and actually write that book. Now, if I was living somewhere else, you know, that would give me an entirely different set of experiences and relationships. And so it would be very hard for me to answer that question of, uh, you know, would that book still come about? And if, and if it did, would it come out, come about the same way? You know, so yeah, that's a, that's a difficult question for me to give a solid answer to because I, I really, I don't know. Knowing a little bit about you, that your answer doesn't surprise me. It's in line with your general philosophy. I, I tend to agree, even though I'm not in your body, but I do think that I feel like um, a book would always have happened with you. I feel like you were always going to write a book regardless. So there's that. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. it could, could very well have been. Um, you know, I, I, I carry the idea that, you know, we're, as human beings, we're, we're malleable. Um, like I said, you know, we're, we're, pl we're always putting on these masks and playing these roles. Well, what's to stop, you know, me or you or anyone listening from taking off the mask they're wearing right now and deciding they want to be a different person? You know, deciding that, you know, they, they are going to start this business or write that book or be a more sociable person or, you know, have a you know, enter a new relationship or whatever it is, you know, it's, it's all a matter of just making that decision, cutting off the other objects, uh, the other options and, you know, just moving forward, having the courage to move forward and do what you've decided on doing. And so that's, yeah, that's to kind of 
put put some uh, sprinkling on what what you were saying as far as mm. the answer I gave. So when you were writing this book, you were you said you had your lessons that you wanted to pass on to people, and then as part of writing the book, you're obviously analyzing your life and drawing in other philosophies. In that process, though, did you find out more things about yourself that were that that you hadn't planned on writing about? Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. That was, you know, I, I, I often talk about uh, both in my book and my writing and, uh, you know, to the people I'm mentoring that entrepreneurship is a, a, a path to self-actualization. Um, and, you know, you really get to see a lot of yourself. It gives you a lot of self-awareness at the same time, right? Uh, and the book was just the same way. You know, I'm sure other authors can agree to this. Maybe, maybe yourself, you know, when you're sitting there writing the book, it's just like doing those push-ups. It's just like, you know, wrestling with your sparring partner in a martial arts class. You know, when you're sitting there thinking that you can't write anymore or that you have nothing else to say, and then all of a sudden you get this, you know, burst of inspiration and, you know, next thing you know, there's like 14 pages that have just been written. And it's like, whoa, where did that come from? I thought I was done for the day. And, you know, it's, it's things like that with, that really help me get to see a side of myself, that writer side of myself that I hadn't seen before uh, up until that point. Yeah, I love that. I can definitely relate to that because there is also a level of patience in the writing process. Just, um, you know, if you show up to write and nothing's coming, just even being okay with that rather if you stop and get frustrated that there's no results then you are putting up a bigger like you're putting up a wall to to your yeah your flow of inspiration so I love hearing stuff like that um, and I love yeah. hearing about yeah. other various like I love hearing about um, what the writing process looks like for different writers yeah i think for me it was it, it was there was a lot of that right like getting getting that feeling of being stuck but just like you said i think it, it's that acceptance really helps with that because once you accept it you kind of take away some of the blocks that you're putting in front of yourself because we're doing it to ourselves right it's not like somebody is coming and stopping us from writing well, we may think that they are, but really it's just in our imagination. And um, really owning that, come, coming back circle to the ownership thing, owning that we are the ones doing this to ourselves, um, it, it, it helps with that. And kind of circling back to what you were saying, being too attached to the outcome. You know, it, once we kind of let loose and just, you know, have fun with it, uh, a lot of good things come about in that, in that mm. state of business you know when you're when you're just doing something for the sake of doing it not for the sake of getting something back yeah yeah uh, I'm trying to remember where I read this particular passage in your book it might have been in the introdu introduction um, you were saying that you were observing yourself observing yourself and then you were like, well, how many other observers are there? Was that at, was at the beginning? I think it was in the introduction. And I'm like, what the fuck it? I need more coffee to actually, because then I could really <laughs> visualize observers, watching observers. And I'm like, where are you going with this? And um, it just made me, it just made me laugh. But um, I just, <laughs> I love that you added it. And I was just like, this is so crazy. Is that in the introduction? Is that? It's right in the start. So it's chapter one. Chapter one. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, <laughs> just having a laugh. And um, yeah, I wanted to mention that because I was like, I actually need more caffeine to be able to process this, this line <laughs> of thought. Um, okay. Uh, going back to the life coach role, or business coach, 
what what do you do really well when you're offering guidance to others? So right now what I'm actually doing is I'm helping creative people, creative professionals, I guess we can call this group of people, um, really gather themselves together and build a productive asset that can actually supply them with a dependable stream of income. Um, you know, oftentimes a lot of these creative people, they uh, tend to get stuck or find something new to jump on. Who are on those people? Do, that, do you know where you can find those people? <laughs> do you know anyone <laughs> like that? I can Have say I was know. one of them at one point. So yeah, that was yeah, a, a yeah, think, silly dig at myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a common thing that we all go through. And, um, you know, once you, once you go through it a few times, I think you learn the tools, techniques, and the perspectives that can get you out of that zone and back into getting that wheel spinning. And uh, I think to answer your question, I think that's what I, I'm really good at is helping people see that, that perspective and just giving them a few of the tools and methods that I have picked up along the way myself uh, to help them get things done without having to keep starting over. Mm, and I think I've said this to you before, I am in definite need of your services, but I feel like I've got to do, you know, the podcast is new, I've got to do one thing at a time, um, but I definitely struggle with that. So there would be a lot of creatives out there that would be needing that particular guidance. Um, so thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have something for listeners to help promote your book. Is that right? You have something yeah, so, special you want to offer? Yeah, I, I am offering a free chapter of the book if they just go to the website, uh, which is businesslifetactics.com. Uh, they'll see, um, you know, a form there they can fill out to get a free chapter of the book. And um, I particularly think it's a really important chapter, and that's the, one of the reasons why I wanted to give that specific one away. Uh, it's it's the chapter on money called uh, Demystifying Money. So in that chapter, I talk a lot about uh, what – this tool money is and how we should approach it in our daily lives and uh, some things that we can some perspectives we can embody to actually start making more of it and being happier with what we have i really like that chapter there was some i want to use the word depressing but it was there was some line of thoughts in there that were just a bit confronting because it, the thoughts you had about um, retirement what you're working towards isn't necessarily what you what you need as a, as a human and I'm, I'm just reading it and going holy shit this sucks I need to you know it made me want to take ownership and make sure that I wasn't working towards something that society is making me believe that I need not, you know, and I'm not really honoring what is important to me. So it was a good chapter. Right. Yeah. I, I think I, you hit, you hit the, the nail on the head as they say. Um, yeah. That's, that's really the, the purpose of that chapter is to, I, I am kind of confrontational in that chapter and I'm really, blunt because of the fact that there is a lot of that programming of, you know, this is how you need to live your life. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know, that, that, and that, like it's like a set template that everyone should follow. But, you know, once, you know, someone could step back and have that self-reflective moment, like, like you just uh, mentioned you did and really think like, Hey, is this what I want? Or is this what I've been told I should want? Um, I think that's a very liberating place to be. Well, I think this chat was a long time coming for me. Um, I think it's like 
I feel like it's already a great asset to my show. So I just want to thank you for your time. I'm super appreciative that you're here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, it was a lot of fun and I was looking forward to this and I'm glad we got to do this after that whole heat wave went away. <laughs> Totally. And thanks for, you know, putting up with my squirmy parts as I try to get used to this totally new area of hosting and, and all of that. So um, thanks for bearing with me through the process. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm totally new to this podcast stuff myself. So um, I think you did great. And this was a very incredible experience for me. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners out there as well. Um, thank you again. I think we both did great. And it, it's a great book. I'm so proud of you. Um, it's I'm just, just your journey. And it, it's just been awesome connecting with you and, and sharing this with you. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.